Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel. It's in the description below. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Launched in 2017, this is the extraordinary Zenith Chronomaster El Primero Grand Dot Moon Phase, a timepiece with a remarkably dynamic moon phase, we'll talk about that in a moment, an entirely open dial that grants you access to the movement below and a double digit date with both discs visible. It is a large watch, 45 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel. It measures 16.2 millimeters thick from lug to lug. The watch measures 53.9 millimeters. And if we include the solid end links of the integrated bracelet, but then it's a broad 55 millimeters across the wrist with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist and I feel like we're pushing the lower limit of what's possible here. I'd actually recommend this watch for a wrist 17 centimeters circumference or larger, but you can see it just barely fits me here with the down the barrel shot the over the top shot and then you can see from the cuff shot that it doesn't seem 16 millimeters thick so you're probably fine with the jacket though it'll probably also get hung up on the tightest of dress sleeves but again a bigger watch a bigger wrist and likely a bigger cuff would follow this simply isn't a watch sized for me taking a quick look at the bracelet it's one of the best in the business the Zenith bracelet has always punched above its weight aside from the integration which is lovely with the case flank you can see every individual link is countersunk into the succeeding link which means that the tolerances are wonderful tight. It has an incredibly fluid feel, and if you note, every single link is removable, so you're gonna find the perfect size. You'll also appreciate the polishing down the centers, polishing on the outer faces, satin shoulders. There is a taper to the bracelet. Taking a quick look at the clasp, you can see internally it's engine turned and polished. It is a double folding clasp, and there is a twin trigger release system for popping it open, so it's gonna stay shut unless you depress both triggers, so a lot of security right here. Zenith Star logo and corporate marquee rolling over to the case flank. I happen to prefer the somewhat more conservative Chronomaster case shape to the later uh, highly geometric DeFi's. While the DeFi might be nominally inspired by history, this feels a lot more traditional. Also more traditionally beautiful with a combination of creases and curves and a lovely differentiation of satin and polished elements. The bezel has a vertical section and then a shallow conical section designed to break up its size visually. You can see that it's, cr it's classical on the crown side as well as we have the crown with the Zenith five point star, twin pump pushers, and if you look underneath, they thought of everything. There's a little curve to allow you to more easily Easily dig in your nail underneath the crown. Most of the watch is in high polish and it does have a glamorous appearance as it looks far more expensive than it is. There's a box section sapphire which is a small nod to antiquity as a box section sapphire tends to recreate some of the look of plexiglass. The dial is a maze of amazing textures, tones, materials, and finishes. Starting outboard you can see that there is a blued seconds and minutes track against which you can read fractions of seconds, whole seconds and minutes. The inboard track with the hours and the minutes is a lovely satin grain and you can see it's been satin brushed across its surface with individual applied and cantilevered rhodium plated steel indices. Moving inboard you can see there's a second sapphire underneath the primary sapphire and note that this is a dial that's been printed on sapphire. El Primero seems to float over the works. The caliber underneath, 4047, drives a AM PM indicator, a moon phase, a chronograph, and a double digit date. Now you can see the movement, and it's gorgeous with satin finishing across its base plate. You can also see the blued screws as well as some of the underlying springs and the terminal end of the drivetrain as the bridge around the balance and the terminal end of the drivetrain, they've been hollowed out to make them visible from the dial side. I like to say it's 90% of the theater of a tourbillon at 10% of the price. The escapement here is made of silicon, which means it's a lovely iridescent purple, but it's also unlubricated, low friction and minimal maintenance over time. So you get better precision in the short term and better performance in between major services. Now there is a balance as per El Primero precedent beating away at 36,000 vibrations per hour, 10 beats per second. That's why the chrono seconds hand seems to move more smoothly than a conventional lower beat chronograph. Minutes register over at 
three o'clock, and you can see the minute is a semi-instantaneous jump. There is a double-digit date. Note all of the screws are fired and oxidized blue, not chemically dyed blue. You pull the crown out two positions, and now, this is a little bit different on an El Primero compared to a standard watch, you have the quick set system for the date. The watch is 100 meters water resistant, loomed and automatic, so you better believe it's a sports watch. Pull it out to the intermediate position. Now you can set the time. It's a little bit different. It works the opposite of a regular watch, but take a quick look at the moon phase. Note that the moon is not going anywhere, but as I rotate through the 24 hours of the day, the moon phase actually sits superimposed over a sapphire disc bearing an AM PM day night legend. So we have the stars of the night, we have twilight, and then we have the sun of the day. It's a way to enliven a traditionally romantic but dead complication, bringing a bit more dynamism to the moon phase with that 24 hour day night cycle. Caliber 4047 on the reverse side, you can see it has a nickel anthracite coating. It beats away at 36,000 vibrations per hour, and it is actuated via a column wheel and lateral clutch. Everything has a nickel anthracite coating, so it's silvered and gray, giving it a cool techno-industrial look. Bi-directional automatic winding, 52-hour power reserve. You can see the column wheel and the steel components, the levers, horns, the yoke, and the recentering hammers in action. It's a good-looking movement with tremendous depth, pivoting on 32 joules. Handsome to look at, but happily, Perhaps most pleasing from the dial side, this is most of the fun of a display case back on the dial side of your watch. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And we're back with the big Chronomaster by night.